Welcome back. Week three of Kill the Coronavirus tying competition. This week is nymphs. Doesn't matter what one, doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what you use. Just has to be a nymph. And so what I'm going to do, I did it last week with the streamer. I brought a fly that I'd never shown anybody. It's just kind of, it's kind of a secret for me, kind of my own little uh, fly that I just really kept for myself. And so I started thinking, I'm going to do something like that this week too. I'm going to do flies that I've not released, flies that are just, but not so much that the fly, it's about the style. And they're total freestyle flies. And that's what I'm hoping everybody sends in is, uh, you know, don't knock off a Kaufman stone. You can, that's, and that's fine. Like I said, anything goes. But this week's kind of about total freestyle. And every fly I'm going to show you are flies that I weren't, I wasn't really trying to tie like this a fly. I was trying to tie, I was trying to tie a fly. I wasn't trying to tie a fly that was like the oh, the greatest pupa or the greatest stone fly. I was simply bored and I was freestyling thought processes on how can I tie something in a fashion I have never done or seen. I, I've never seen what I'm going to do on this, this caddis. This caddis pretty... It's pretty hard to make a caddis different. It's a worm, <laughs> so it's pretty hard to change that. But I can't. I had a concept in my mind of something I wanted to see, and so I just did it the way new. On the stonefly, same thing. And it was more of a, I was just bored seeing the same stuff, and I just tried some new, and it doesn't mean it's better, faster, anything. It's just concept where you're freestyling, and maybe that develops into an entire new you know, genre of fly. You don't know. If you just continuously copy other people's flies, it's kind of hard to be original. So, and, it, and, if you, and it's pretty hard, to, like I said, on a cat, it's pretty damn hard to change the cat. It's a, it's a worm. But you can change how you do materials. And so that's kind of the idea of this fly. This is going to, the fly I'm showing right now, uh, I think you can see... This is, and what I was looking for was something that's kind of pupating looking. So when they get, when they pupate, they kind of get that gooey look around their body. And so you can see it's got this little fuzz down the back of it and over on all these. This is the OG. That's the original one. And then you got the tan one up here. That one's kind of, you can see the legs and it's, it's just, and when these things get wet, they're covered with that ostrich hurl and it gives it kind of a, a different look than you would get and it's hard to see all three of them I'm sure but that's the original one right there and then this is just and basically we do two colors you know we do a shade of green and a shade of brown tans and so I've got like here's a whole bunch these things are all done up just for my box I mean and they're just different they're just different shades right and they're all, these are tan, these brown, kind of light. These are bright olive and green. And what, it's just, whatever. It, it's just free stuff. If you want to do the damn thing, you should do it. But do it with a thought process. Don't just copy something. Send something in. I mean, again, you can send whatever you want. If you want to, you want to send me a, a Kaufman Stone type, bird, great, that's fine. But this is kind of the idea is just kind of let it happen. Make it be your own. A lot of the flies that we've got already have been kind of freestyle anyway. It's kind of cool. There's, there's some really cool ideas coming in. And it's given us more ideas about this too. This is day one of the, of the third week. And so the, the nymph week. But the flies I'm seeing, there's been a lot of really cool freestyling going on and really well done. So pretty cool for us to see. And you're going to get to see them all too. We're going to show every single fly. So this fly is basically... For all practical purposes, this fly is a two material fly. We're going to end up with three, but you really wouldn't have to do the third thing if you didn't want to, or you could substitute it. Uh, I showed, and I'll show it again, if, see if I can get Johnny. This is the original fly right here, and underneath here that had deer hair legs. And so, and, and Johnny will show you that. If he doesn't, I'm going to fire him, or maybe I won't. Uh, but anyway, you can see that. And then this brown one, we went to Emu. Jer Jeremy had some, had some really cool colored, I'll show you in a second, some really cool Emu that was just really golden brown. And I thought, man, that'd look really good underneath that caddis. 
I don't know if it's going to work because I never used it. I've used the black a lot, but I haven't used that one. But I think it looks cool. So we're going to end up with, uh, like I said, two materials for all practical purposes. Uh, third, if you're going to put legs on. For hooks wise, I'm using the fire hole sticks. The, uh, the, it's kind of a, the fire hole is kind of one of the newer, this one's got writing on the outside. That's my writing, so I don't put them back on the shelf. Used box. But the 317 competition scud, clink hook, whatever, uh, that it's, it's just barbless, you know. I like the barbless idea, but I have tied on the 2457s and the, the Daiichi, Dairikis, all these hooks, uh, MFC's hooks. I've used all of them. And they're all pretty much got micro barbs nowadays, and so it's not a big deal. If you're tying on this hook, keep tying, or whatever it is, that doesn't matter. It's just, and you don't have to have a scud hook. I, I mean, I like the kind of bend to it, it looks cool. If you do it on a straight hook, you'll be just fine. Material for the body, this is uh, the original one I used was Zelon. So, and you could use anything you want. You could use wool, I, I, it won't matter. It's just, uh, I, I liked a little bit of the reflective value of the synthetics in this, but you could use anything you want to make this, this body tubular uh, and segmented. The fuzzy fiber, was we used that quite a bit. Then I went to the, well, the original was Zelon, and then I went to that, and then uh, this EP trigger fiber. This is super, super soft. It's subtle. It really works well. I use this for a lot of my stuff. A uh, little wing cake, lots of stuff for this stuff. And this is the sulfur, golden, golden sulfur. sulfur, and the lime green. UV green. UV green. Uh, this thing, I do basically, I shade with this. This is my underbody for my tan ones. And this is basically all the bright green ones. So, and it, it, you don't need, and you can tan, you can tone that with the color of ostrich you're going to use, which segues into the second material there is, and that's simply ostrich. And so, basically, if you look at those, that's going to be our ribbing. If you look at the two, the the golden and the olives or bright greens or whatever, on the bright green ones, which is what we tie mostly here. They're either bright green or green, but I mean, in that green phase, I usually use the brown um, ostrich hurl to rib it with, uh, with a black head. I like the contrast. On the tan ones, I use tan for the rib and the brown for the head. So it's basic, you can do three colors, and, and, and I don't think it would really matter if you just use black on all of them, or I don't think it would matter what you use, if, if it's... And you could do something else for the head too. You could dub it, you could do whatever you want. And the last thing, if you decide, like I said, like I showed you on that leather one, the original one I used deer hair. And then I think after that, I used a little bit of partridge. Uh, and then Jeremy had this really cool color of emu, which I'm sure, I don't know if you can see that. It's just kind of a golden brown. And I thought, it, but emu is emu. It comes in a bajillion colors. And I just thought it looked really neat. And so I put it underneath that one I showed you on the deal in the beginning. And it had brown legs. And I don't know. They don't have brown legs, but it looks good to me. So we're freestyling. So we've got this. We've got the hook in. And there's just a little bit about this. Uh, there's no nothing complicated about this fly at all. But we're going to, just like any fly, button up my sleep. We're going to put some real glasses on. We're going to use, we need to have proportions. Is that where you want it, Jeremy? Yep, you're good. Okay. I'm going to start this hook or this uh, thread. And by the way, it's 18 uh, olive nano silk. I'm going to start this and I need to have room to start or to end this fly. When you tie this in, I need to have space to do tie off and then give at least three maybe four turns of ostrich for the head. And that this, again, this is completely up to you how you do your own. And so it, it just, it's going to, where is that? Is that already cut there? There's a piece of that. So when I tie this in, I get back up here and I don't want to have it, don't, you, you want it, you'll see when I do it. I'm going to stop this material because it's wound and I need to have space to, to wrap everything in again. And because this is a little bit buildy, so when you first tie it in, kind of cut it, I cut it just at a slight angle, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna be right about where I want that to end, and I don't worry about finishing this off yet. 
So, and you can see when I get, I'm going to go forward, that's not where, I need about that much space, you know, just, I, I don't know how to describe, three or four turns of ostrich is what it's going to end up with, but I've got to finish the body, so leave yourself a little bit of room, just pull that in, you know, set it where you want it, and then pull it, don't worry about finishing it off yet, now, stretch this material slightly so you know it's not moving, and it tightens your body up, and come right over the top of the hook, and come down, I don't know what to tell you as far as how far to come down this thing, just, it's whatever you like the looks of, if you like it to look like it's, you know, a little bit more swimmy, uh, just come down a little bit further, then I'm going to tan, like I said, I tone it, and that's what this is really about, in, in this emu, you're going to see, I, I like the longer emu, I can, as long as I can get, and I'm going to, I just called that emu, I cannot say ostrich and emu in the same sentence without <laughs> screwing it up. Ostrich, emus the legs. I'm going to take the ostrich, and I like to have the longer fibers in here because this is the toner. It's the one that's dulling it down a little bit, but this is what's going to make it look like it's pupating. Like it gives it kind of a, a pulsing look, and that's what's make what makes the fly look so good in the water. So I'm going to take the, and I'm just looking here. I'm, I'm looking at the ostrich just for one that's got a, you know, nice good stem. This stuff's virtually indestructible. It's really strong. I say that and a minute ago. I was tying one and broke one on film. So we had to start over. Yes. It's only because I couldn't get it untied quick enough. But there's a thing when you're tying this in. All right. I want you to come up just a little bit, just a little above where you're going to have this first turn. Don't do that. Don't trap that. So. I'm trying not to get the fibers trapped right there. So what I'm doing is if I lift this up, you can see I'm going to have one turn right here behind it, and that's going to catch that emu in the fiber. When I come around, you'll see when I do it, when I wrap it, it's going to go into the grooves that we're going to make. And so that's what makes it so indestructible. Now just nice tight turns forward. Now we're going to clean up that spot. Now right there is where I said I want to end. And I'll have plenty of room right there to tie off. I'm going to have, I'm, where I'm going to end here, I'm going to go forward one, right about where the thread is. And then I'll still have uh, plenty of room to get my turns of ostrich, not emu, ostrich. Cannot get that right. Okay. Now we're going to take this body and we're going to spin it, but we don't have to crank on this. We do not have to spin it so hard it's like rock and that it's going to twist because we're going to want the segments to show. And this is the only part of this fly. This first turn right here goes behind the emu. See where or the, geez, the ostrich? I want it to go behind the ostrich. And I watch what happens when I do it. I want it to stay. Don't let it release like this because it'll you'll lose your tubular effect of that body, which will stop giving you the segments. Now, when you're going forward, so you can see, I'm trying to leave it open so you can see right here. Don't worry about getting these really, really tight. See how there's a little opening there? All right, just come forward. I mean, don't give yourself big gaps, but don't, don't worry about it just being super tight. If I put that in my material clip, it round. You can see we're getting nice, clean. Can, am I blocking mm -hmm. that, Jeremy? Nice, clean, but I don't want them really, really, really tight. So I'm going to get right here to the, if I put that in the, in the uh, material clips, nobody would be yelling at me right now. Kind of backed that off a little bit. All right, so here's where I want it to end. I want all this space here for my head. And so take your thread, keep it wound right now. Get it away from there. Come over the top of it with just one to secure it. All right, you, you're, not, you're not trying to tie it off yet. And then you want to undo this. Make sure it flattens out. If you try to tie that in when it's really tubular, it's going to tie off really poorly. If you strand it out like that so it's all broken loose, you can come in and it'll all tie in nice and clean. And just, we're going to leave it. Don't try to, you don't have to try to cut it off really tight. Let it go all the way to the head. And then work back. And what that's going to do 
is it's not going to have a bump there anywhere. So when you wrap your, your last head, your, your ostrich for your head, it tends, if you have a bump there, it keeps rolling back and falling off the bump and it'll never get nice and clean and give you that full head look that you're looking for with the, when, it, when it's all wrapped. Because it's really pretty when you first put it on, then the fish eat it up and not so pretty. So take your emu, and this is why you can see, I'll get this out of the way, this is, this is in between those two, the, the, the first one and the second one. And so what that does is the emu will now, or the ostrich here, I swear to God, the ostrich is going to, see how it's following those, these grooves? And we're just going to let that dig right into, right into those grooves. It's not, it, and then when you get to the front, I like to give it at least two turns right there to kind of, just to finish this head off, this, this junction between the body and the head. So we're just a little bit, and that stuff's not going to have much build at all. Okay, so now you can see we're getting that, we're going to have this fuzzy look around it. And I've got, I still have a nice clean tie off. So when I get, I'm going to put one more material on before I do it, because I'm going to show you how to do the emu. And so the emu, which I actually got that one right, that, this comes, this isn't really, what I'm using is kind of byproduct for most of the emu. It's not what you would, like what we use it for for mostly is like gills and for tails and stuff like that. And so, but I, what I'm doing is I'm going to take some of these, like this is a, this is what, when I think of emu, this is what I'm thinking of. These nice fuzzy, you know, fibers that are, are great for tails and you get into this, the fuzzy stuff, it's good for putting gills on flies. But what I'm looking for is stuff that's more in between that, like this is kind of fuzzy up here. When you, when you stroke that back where you can see off to the side, it's a little fuzzier than I want. This one right here is more like miniature uh, biot, really. It's really pretty. They're pretty sparse and far between the fibers, you can see. And what I'm looking for is one that's in between that, like this. When I, when I pull that down to the side, I get these nice, there, there's, there's plenty of them in a row, just like that. I mean, I've got a bunch of them pulled off here already. And so they're just, there's plenty of fibers when I tie it in. And they're, they're the, the right color, everything I'm looking for. And I'll show you how I do these. with. And you do the same thing with any of these feather sets when you're doing these for legs like this. And so I'm, I'm looking down. Okay, that's good. That's maybe just, you just got to eyeball it and say, okay, that'd be great. And you're just trying to get some that are pretty even. I usually tie in about eight. So I'm going to take this. But you can see if, as these two over here on the side that I've got pulled off. If you pull those in, they're going to be really short. So I've got a six or of them up here, eight or so. Again, it, I think this is relatively superfluous. I don't think that these legs make any difference. But they look cool. So now we're going to turn this upside down. I, I put the feather upside in here. Just I'm going to catch it once. Twice, I'm going to look at it. And I just got enough tension on that that I can, I'm holding it with my left hand so that when I pull, I just keep looking. I don't want it to just take off from flying on me. I want them hanging right there. That's just, and that's completely personal. Give this, tighten that down a couple, three turns so that it's nice and tight. So when you, when you, if you don't, when you pull on this to cut it, it's going to move your legs all over. So just get it secure. Now clean that up, and again, look at you want if you've got a bump. This is this is nice and clean, right? There's no bumps. Legs are set down nice right there. If you've got a bump, go ahead and clean it up right now. So I'm going to take the black one last. I, I really think this dolls these up really nice. This contrast in color, and so I'm going to show you a little trick about tying this in. It's not really that big of a trick. But if you, for me, uh, and I've done lots of ostrich, I mean, and, and I've had the same problem with a lot of it. And that's why I said if you, if, if you had a bump, I'm going to try to get one to show. If you come in here and you clean in any bumps, like if you had a bump right there, or if it was in the middle, 
if you try to thread clean it just a little bit, the stuff won't fall off of it. But if you take, and I just thought of something, I, I'm, I was about to say which end of this to tie in. I'm not sure I said it in the beginning, but when you tie your ostrich in for your rib, you tie it in by the tip first. I think I missed that. And so instead of tying it, this we're going to tie in by the butts because it's the thick part. On this one, you come in and you tie it by the tip first. It's a little bit skinnier up there, so it goes into the groove of the body a little easier. I apologize for missing that, but uh, and then you, and it just gets thicker as it goes forward. And we're always about tapers. This one is all going to be the same length. But if you'll instead of tying this in right back here, tie it in about at the halfway point to where we you can see where where we've where we've got there. So and then just advance your thread right to the eye because we're going to catch it and come back over it. But when you do that, if you, when you're wrapping this, if you wrap your, and I'll do this manually so you can, if you aren't using a rotary, you're going to come back over this. And I like to come over top of my body, right uh, there is probably good. And then I'm just building for Matt. And this way, when I come back forward, I don't get the it doesn't fall off if and by that I mean it's not falling we've already corrected the bump thing but I just come forward and if you go back towards the body then come back you won't trap that much fiber and when you do it you'll, you'll come back and so that hackle's already set there nice and tight and you come back through it it doesn't have a tendency to want to fall, fall off the front you may not have that problem Get this nice and tight right here. And then just get your fingers, just pull back what you can and just make, and we're, we're going right over top of that, just nice progressive turns. We're just gonna have a little tiny head on this. If you wet your fingers just a little bit, you'll see, you lay that back just a little bit. Three turns on that. Nice and tight. Now, legs are down, pretty little head. These legs are going to lay down to the side. When this is wet, you'll see I, got, I was grabbing onto them pretty hard. So get those legs down so you can see them again. And now, <clears throat> just because I watched when I never watched these videos, I never watched I hardly anything. <sighs> I watched myself on the just a piece Johnny edits these and so I was watching it and I took I don't know what fly it was it was so sloppy when I put this I had some bad glue this is new glue and I took this applicator I never use these applicators just to to redeem myself I'm going to put the head on this uh, back here when I put this on all I do is I take a little drop of this stabilize my hand and I come in and I just touch it and I mean, I did this head, we, we do a lot of, you do a lot of things when you tie too much and you just kind of get, uh, you know, whatever. You, you, you get too, oh, whatever is what you do. When you do it, you come in with your bodkin and you just hit where you want that glue. And I don't use this, if I'm doing a streamer, I don't care, I can get, you know, I've got plenty of room. But I used that applicator and it was so bad looking. <laughs> it was like, who is that guy? What a heck. So that's the, it doesn't have a name, but you can see it's kind of freestyle. It's really cool. When you see this thing with those little hairs, when it gets all around it, it'll kind of encapsulate that whole thing. And because it's very soft, it's going to move just ever so little. It makes it look so natural in the water. It's crazy. It's really fat. It's a super durable fly because of that, because of the ostrich going between the grooves, you know, in the body, they don't really have a chance to get in there and break it up too much. So it's, it, it lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever, <clears throat> but it lasts a long time. It gives you a great silhouette, gives you everything you need in a caddis, you know, just the tubular body, got some legs. Again, if you didn't want to keep them, you don't want them, uh, doesn't matter. So this is day one of uh, third week. This is nymphs for kill the coronavirus competition. It's a nymph, any nymph you want, anything goes, don't care. 
uh, but try to freestyle just a little bit. I'll give you a bonus point. I'm very little to do with this, but the guys will give you a bonus point. Not really, uh, maybe. So anyway, that's the caddis of whatever it's called. We don't have a name for it. Uh, hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.